Hey everyone, just a quick, I guess, preview of a sprite exercise that I'm working on for an upcoming video. This takes some code written by Ernesto that converts sprites from the sprite editor format, which is a library format. I'll call it a library format. He doesn't call it that, but I'll explain in a moment. And it converts it, or rather loads it, into memory at the uh, prescribed location as far as Super Basic is concerned. So I'll move my cursor up to the, um, the key point here which is this um, 30,000 line. So right across here, you'll see the destination of 30,000. If you remember in the memory management or the or kind of the about how memory is allocated and used in Super Basic, 30,000 is the area kind of way up there in memory where Super Basic stores sprites uh, by default. Of course, you can change that. And it's well outside of the 64K range. In any case, Ernesto Sprite Editor, which um, I have a video about it, I just haven't posted it yet. Um, let you create up to, I believe, 255 sprites in one file and save it. And that's ideal for animating sprites. You can take a sprite, copy it, make a change to it, copy it again, make a change to that. And then uh, by flipping between the, the uh, image in memory, you're essentially showing a different frame of a particular, of an image um, and affecting kind of a very basic animation. But in any case, um, that file is not load ready into memory. In fact, Ernesto's original sprite editor, which was developed for the C256U Plus platform, that's a mouthful, um, C256U Plus platform, um, had a library format as well. It was much more uh, simple. Of course, the prior Phoenix machines only supported one size sprite. Here on the F256, we've got three sizes, 8x8, 16x16, and 32x32. The point is that he saves um, and had to create a library format um, that's a little bit more complex and is not load ready necessarily. Um, so he wrote this um, conversion program and uh, I'll post it on the uh, Phoenix Marketplace. But you're looking at it here in all of the wonderful, colorful uh, you know, context highlighting. Um, it's a relatively short program about, I'll say, as probably looks like 35 lines. And what it does is it asks you for, um, the, for, for the file name and it converts the file into kind of the load ready format, writes it to disk, and also does the courtesy of loading it into memory at the 30,000 range. So that's what this does. Um, I already have it loaded and I've already created the output file. I just wanted to show you how simple it is. Once the memory is placed, once that uh, sprite memory is populated with images, um, how easy it is to turn a sprite on and do something with it. So that's the point of this very brief video. Um, in his code, he has a single sprite command. And uh, I'm gonna show you where that is. Um, we turn sprites on on line five at the top there. You can see it right up here, sprites on. Um, outside of that, all this mumbo jumbo, he has a single sprite command, which is right here on line 150. And what he does is he says, well, sprite zero out of, you know, 64 or zero out of 63. Um, and he's gonna move it to location 100, 100 on the screen. That's pixels down and across. And he's using image zero, which is the base of the 30,000 address. Um, I'm not going to put it at 100, 100 because that's somewhere in the middle of text. But what I did here was I, uh, I'll move it to 200, 120. And without further ado, um, I'll get a syntax error because there's something wrong with my image. Let's see what I do wrong there. Oh, of course. The sprites are not yet on, so it does not like the command. That's what happens when you do these things live, folks. Sprites on, sprite to that location with that image. And there you can see him right there, that dude. Now the color palette's incorrect because I didn't bother to load the color palette that I used when I created the sprite, but you can get a kind of an idea of what he looks like. So that's, um, that's the first thing. Um, second thing I want to show you is a simple loop, which runs from 32 to 228 which although I'm indexing across uh, by X, I'm using that to, uh, to, for, the, for the Y location of the sprite. Inside that, I'm uh, running a loop from zero to six. And then I'm basically just populating the screen with sprites and moving them in a, in, in a compound next loop. So I'll show you what that does. There you go. So it simply moves them all about as quickly as it can from top to bottom of the screen, uh, increasing the, the X, otherwise known as the Y position, I should probably re re, uh, relabel that. And in addition, uh, on an inside loop, going from zero to six, which will take each of these seven sprites 
and display them approximately 32 pixels apart, which is about the width of, of the sprite. I mean, it is the width of the sprite. So that's one bit of things, to, one little thing to show you. The, the last thing to show you is this loop, which runs basically on a single sprite, but through the images. And you'll see what it does here. I think it'll be right down here. There you go. And you can see a little bit of the animation I spoke of. So it's rough, the colors are incorrect. It's actually running through all of the frames, which I mean to have these um, act a certain way when I make this, this little demo. You'll see the, the nostril uh, is actually a two frame animation. If this, if, this, if this character is sitting for too long, you'll see him kind of get twitchy. And then there are others that have kind of a walking motion, but all eight frames does this. So that's it for now. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, that'll be coming soon in an upcoming demo as part of the sprite discussion. Um, nothing too heavy duty, but uh, ignore most of this. Uh, the point is once you have your sprite in memory, um, accessing it, create, uh, enabling it, putting it to a certain location and telling what image to use is extremely straightforward and super basic.